computer. Okay, so I was asked a great question by an advanced student um, who is um, in the non-thinking, in the silence quite a lot, but wants to be able to um, uh, ask the question on maintaining the desire to remain in the non-thinking. Well, the non-thinking is like um, a stillness or a silence and the, and, and, and the thoughts start to disappear. It's, it's like... Um, it's like it's very much like if if, the, if there's a recognition of a certain point that thoughts, you know, bodies, the world, phenomena. Uh, at a certain point, it's seen that these are all witnessed, that none of it is 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 what I am. And then, as one lets go of the need to identify with the clouds, with the thoughts, the bodies, with all the um, phenomena out there then it starts to disappear and the awareness of the silence, the presence, the infinite presence starts to become overwhelming and, and the rest of the world starts to disappear. However, there'll be a tendency for someone at an advanced stage to uh, fall back into the world and somehow become a, a thinker or a body or become identified with aspects of the world. And so then but there's something deep within that doesn't want to get re-identified with the world or thoughts or, or whatever it is out there. So there seems to be this frustration and wanting just to remain in the silence, but yet getting pulled out um, into the world. So the thing to do, I mean, obviously, you cannot remain in the silence by thinking about it. If you go into thoughts, you're immediately back into sucked into the world. So how do you remain there without using the head? Um, so it's actually, if I describe it, even though it cannot be described in words, it's more like when the silence, it, when the silence is here, it's like um, abiding in it. It's like remaining in it. And um, almost, it's, it, it's not, it can't be said in words, but it's almost like, um, it's almost like uh, once you realize that it's more like the silence is behind uh, the craving to hook into the world. So it is very much similar to imagine, even though if you imagine you're using pictures and you're not a picture, but if you're in a cinema and there was suddenly the spiritual awakening that the movie screen is nothing to do with you, it's actually uh, useless and pointless to even identify with what's going on in the movie screen. And you recognize that you can abide in this stillness, this emptiness uh, that's behind it. And there's not a you that abides it. It's not a thinking because th thoughts cannot exist in that place. So you can't think about it, picture it, imagine it, or do anything because those things are from the uh, from the separation. So once you're there, it's a, it's it's like uh, just trust that there's something there that. Um, uh, just, uh, just it's almost like an orientation. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, I've got a reminder. It's the Saint Francis thing. Yes, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. That's probably the best use of words. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. That's a, that's probably one of the best use of words. So, to remain in the non-thinking, you're you're in the place before the thinking, where thoughts don't exist and the world doesn't exist. And uh, you can't do that by thinking about it or by being in the identified world. So it is, yeah, it was like I was trying to say that. It, it, it's behind the world and there's no interest in returning to the thoughts of the world. And eventually just, you, there's not a you that does it, but just the more that that place, um, there's an abiding in that place, the more it seems to get stronger. And the temptation which is the resid residual of the unconscious ego to hook back into the uh, into the world starts to get washed away, so that's the way you do it through the inquiry process, which is or or you could use the self inquiry process. So if you if you're um, <clears throat> if you're rehooking into the world out of the silence out of the infinite, then you could ask, well, uh, what am I? That is, what am I? Am I this this world, these thoughts, this body, these images, or 
am I that which is before that? And that will take you back into the silence. Um, or you look, it's almost like a looking behind, but there's no you that looks behind. We'll go that. Otherwise, um, for people at a, a less advanced stage, you can cancel. Uh, whatever it is that pulls you, if you experience the body, if you experience feelings, if you experience thoughts, you can just cancel them until they cease to exist. It's hard work, but it does work. Um, and or you can use the um, yeah, that's an advanced question. So those would probably be some of the tools I would use. There was also mention of um, uh, I think the fear of disappearing. Yes, the fear of the world no longer existing. Well, that that is that is uh, that is classically what most of the enlightened teachers talk about. The uh, the last fear of the ceasing of the existence of the ego forevermore. That it gets burned away, never to uh, re-inflate ever again. So one then becomes the infinite silence, never to become a object, a thought, or a body ever again. And that's the last. That is actually the. Uh, that is actually the only real death, the death of the ego. The ego tells you it is the source of life, without your thinking and controlling. Uh, you wouldn't exist, and if without that, you, but actually, that's just an illusion. So uh, one has to go through the allowing the the ego to burn off the final, the final burning off of the ego, just by having that, just by uh, doing the course in miracles or stating the truth. You're an infinite being. Uh, what you are was never born and can never die. So when something is dying, when the ego is like screaming as it as its capacity to re uh, re-identify with the world gets dissolved the very last time as Ramana reported uh, he observed the death the dying and then it died you know and he never returned to being a thinker body again so that's the last death and uh, Hawkins as well uh, the, the 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 it's like a it is an extreme fear it is the fear I mean the ego has been around for you know, 10, 20 lifetimes for the average. So as that burns off, never to come in, it's a thing. But then um, those who've had profound spiritual experiences know it's not the truth. And it's it's safe to allow the dying of the ego or just see that something's observing it. The infinite cannot die, so let it die. Uh, and, and then it, it can never re, re-identify if you've burnt off the last thing. So it's just good to... Um, uh, if you're mulling that over, you know you you are sort of like uh, just dissolving any last resistances of the ego to get ready. And then the, what I, I experienced it once, and I and I refused. And you know, otherwise I'd be in the infinite now. But I unfortunately, I when the terror of losing my ego came on me, it was a long time ago. I latched onto a thought. I wasn't ready to for it to burn off. So that was a big mistake. Anyway, never mind. So let's hope another chance. So when these, you know, you just sort of like, it's almost like you're getting ready to be with the infinite. And then the infinite opens up a doorway where the last terror comes and the grace is present. And then there has to be the willingness to let the ego die, to be in the infinite uh, forevermore. So that's that. That's good. And uh, let's see what's, what's anything else that's... Um... The tears, yeah, I understand the tears, you know, like... Will never return to the body and the thinker, and this world may ne- never ex- it may cease to exist as you understand it. And there's a crying, you know, like it'll be like your last. And in fact, when I had my white light spiritual experience with um, the teacher of enlightenment, I won't name right now. Um, um, there were tears actually. In it's like in in a it's like the loss of the world into the white light. Uh, and uh, the ego had a, unfortunately didn't have enough time to cry because it was like being shoved into the infinite light uh, so fast. But otherwise, there is a crying, like you're you're letting go of your attachment to the world, to the body, to the thoughts, to the familiarity of duality, and you could be rocketed off into the infinite light forevermore, which is which is known to be. But then it does bring up the ego stuff of letting go completely forever. So you just cry that off. Uh, and that, that's just the ego sobbing that uh, it'll lose its toys. It's okay. Uh, probably the best tip to do is to realize that you know the crying, the crying is of the ego, 
Um, the, the infinite doesn't doesn't cry, but let the ego cry. Uh, that's its way of releasing stuff, so that's good. Okay, uh, I'm going to press stop.